Tommy Stokey for the Action Network, filling in for the vacationing Darren Ravel this week, joined as always by Jay Croucher, points bet director of trading to go over the week nine NFL betting market. Jay, I want to start right away with the biggest news of the week. Aaron Rodgers out for Green Bay. It seems like this might be the week that betters jump off Kansas City after that Monday night performance. But with Jordan Love in for the Packers, are we going back to the Chiefs or what does the market look like this week? Suspect the betters will go back to the Chiefs as the week goes on. Early money was on Green Bay. I feel bad for the people that took some Packers plus one and a half expecting to go to war with Aaron Rodgers. And now they're going to war with Jordan Love in Arrowhead. But, you know, the drop from Rodgers to Love is about as big as it gets in the NFL. It's ironic uh, going into last week, we would have said the biggest drop was Dak Prescott to Cooper Rush. uh, But apparently Cooper Rush wants to throw his name in the MVP conversation. Uh, So, Look, it's, uh, it's going to be tough for Green Bay, but certainly this Kansas City defense is a pretty good spot for Jordan Love uh, to get acclimated to the NFL. Speaking of MVPs, Mike White and the Jets, last week you couldn't, get, you couldn't give away a ticket on the Jets against the Bengals. Everybody loved Burrow and Chase and the Bengals offense. They lose outright to the Jets. Now they're a small favorite against the Browns, and the Browns themselves coming off a disappointing loss to the Steelers. A big uh, division matchup. Where's the early action like in that one? So it's pretty split at the moment. The line right now is Cincinnati minus two and a half. I think Cincinnati are one of the strangest teams in the league where if you just throw out that Baltimore game, then everything makes sense about Cincinnati. They'd be, you know, a team that's slightly above 500, that's made clear improvement from last year, but isn't ready to throw its hat in the contender ring. But Winning 41-17 in Baltimore just threw everything off. And they looked like, at that point, you know, a team that could very easily win the division. And then they lose as 11-point favourites in New York to the great Mike White. So I think that this line against Cleveland, another team that's really struggling with injury, with form, that's dealing with a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff as well, I think this line reflects just the uncertainty as to, you know, which of these teams is most likely to challenge Baltimore for the AFC North. The Jets were just one of a few ugly underdogs to cover last week. Obviously, the Giants on Monday night, the Texans closed some closing line numbers against the Rams. Do the better see that and they say, OK, I want to jump on ugly underdogs this week or no way that can happen again. Is there, is there an ugly dog that that gets a little attention right now? So the dog that we're taking the most proportion of handle on at the moment is actually the Houston Texans. Uh, for once, uh, getting less than double digits uh, with Tyrod Taylor back. That's been the most bet underdog. And I think that's just people having, surprisingly, a, a fair bit of faith in Tyrod Taylor, who looked really good at the start of the season. And it's easy to forget that, you know, Houston at the start of the year, they were pretty solid uh, and they were, you know, covering early on. And then when the Davis Mills experience started, things started to go off the rails. But, you know, this Miami team has been very underwhelming. I think the thought is that, you know, Houston with Tyrod, the gap between them and Miami isn't so significant. So people have been willing to to take the points with Houston. Tyrod's agent might need to send a Christmas card to to Mills because he's he's the best quarterback in the league in comparison. Let's go to uh, Sunday Night Football to finish this off. The Titans, they're hot. They they beat the Chiefs. They beat the Bills. They win at Indianapolis last week, but lose Derrick Henry, who is the the kind of face of their offense, obviously. And now they travel to face the Rams, a team that the betting public loves to get behind. Seven and a half points on Sunday night. Where do you think this ends up and, and which side do you think betters are going to end up on? So I think the people will jump on the Rams just because of the Henry news, uh, the lack of faith in Tennessee beyond Henry. But, you know, we think that, you know, Henry is much less valuable to Tennessee than probably the public consensus where, You know, we moved the line from six to seven and a half as soon as Henry went out. It's a one and a half point move. We think that Ryan Tannehill is much more valuable to Tennessee than Derrick Henry. And we would actually have Tannehill as three times more valuable to Tennessee than Henry, where if Tannehill went down and Henry was playing, this line would absolutely be in double digits if it was Logan Woodside going on the road to the Rams. So definitely not riding off Tennessee. Uh, The fact that Henry is out means that they might get away from more of their conservative play calling. Um, that's infected their offense with a lot of first down runs. They're throwing the ball more, playing more efficient offense. That might counteract Henry going down because Henry is an excellent player. They are worse without him. They're just not as worse, uh, we think at least, they're not as worse as most people might think. Jay Croucher, Director of Trading for Points Bet. Thanks as always. I'm going to go take Darren's paycheck and put it on the Titans, I think. 
Thanks, Tommy. Make sure you check out all of PointsBet's promotions, including this one for Sunday Night Football.